Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Let's Play Pillars of Eternity. I am Sir Tristan. In the last episode, we explored this cave. Well, it's not really a cave. It's more like a temple. It's Silant Lys is the name. We are here. Our party was trying to make it to Gilded Vale in recent episodes. We were traveling with a caravan that was stuck and unable to proceed due to a fallen log in the road. We camped for the night, but were attacked by not necessarily bandits, but people who wanted to protect this temple. Most of the caravan was killed, and we had What's to take need? refuge here. We're now ready to head back out into the world, however, so let's do that. Hopefully we can make it to the Gilded Vale, perhaps find some additional support. Okay, here we go. Four figures stand silhouetted before an otherworldly apparatus, an ancient structure of chiseled adra and metallic veins, inscrutable and ominous and looming like a silent observer. Standing motionless in their midst is what appears to be a human body, colorless as stone or ash. The other figures gaze upon it in what might be contemplation. From your vantage point, you are well obscured from their view. The face of one of the figures is distantly visible, framed by long tendrils of oily gray hair tinged dark at the ends, and a thick beard that seems to obscure all trace of emotion. I guess it's this guy right here on the left. His faded robes are embroidered with a runic language unlike anything you have ever seen, and his head is crowned with a strange black headdress, with two protrusions jutting out, one on either side like the wings of some profane and malevolent creature. Oathbinder, bear witness, and see this man has kept his word true to his last breath, full to his blood's last drop. Guide his soul, queen that was, and regard it among your favored. Let his life by the key be his confession. Let his death by the key be his absolution. May he walk the world ever free of the crushing weight of the book. I need to turn the, um, the voice dialogue up a little bit here. Your brother has done his part, and you have seen the power of his contribution. I will accept no further hesitation from the rest of you. In the sight of the queen that was, will you fulfill the oath? Will you take your place beside your brother in the endless esteem of her memory that is without flaw? Step forth and be assured of the great worth of your life's course. So, these people may be part of the other group that attacked us. Perhaps some um, worshippers of this local deity here over overseeing this temple as well. Although they don't really look, they're not really dressed like it. So maybe not. Hmm, okay. So this apparatus is, I guess, draining their souls or draining their physical essence or something? It doesn't look pleasant either way. For an instant, the apparatus goes quiet, and the air is still. Then, all at once, it erupts with a concussive surge. Light floods your vision, and you are knocked to the ground. Your head snaps back as you land, and pain wells into the back of your skull, washing your last thoughts away into the black, unconscious void. You open your eyes to a different place, another time. You stand in a circular room, grand and domed. Its walls lined with adra and trimmed with copper. The style is ancient, but the chamber is unweathered. At the far end, a great pillar of adra pierces the floor from below like a ragged spike, its shimmering texture giving the illusion of boundless depth. Encircling the pillar is an apparatus much like the one you have just seen, but immense and multifaceted and intertwined. The work, perhaps, 
of a prodigious but fevered mind. Your thoughts are yours and not yours, and they seem to exist before you think them, and they are all questions, pressing questions, troubling questions, questions that must be answered, or... At the base of the pillar now, you see a man with a thick gray beard and ceremonial robe, his oily hair tucked beneath a black cowl and a strange ornamental headdress. You know this man. You are walking towards him now at a pace that is hurried, while trying not to appear so. You have something you want to ask him, one question above all, and the question madly spins in your mind. Hmm. So during this event, did I... Am I seeing through someone else's eyes, or am I recalling something from my past? Or perhaps I'm merged with someone else completely and seeing what they're seeing? I guess that's all for now. And sure enough, the uh, those three have turned to ash. Oh. Uh, you awaken to find your malaise has broken only to be replaced with something far more concerning. Faint whispers are audible at the edge of your hearing, like a ringing in your ears that does not subside. Movement flits through your periphery, but when you turn to look, you can see no signs of whatever it was. You find your gaze regularly darting this way and that, an, an involuntary paranoid tick. If this is a sickness, it may be dangerous to go without treatment for long. The figures at the machine stand frozen in place, flesh and blood replaced with cinders and ash. The man who led them is nowhere to be seen. Yeah, Hayoden and Kaliska lie bloody on the uneven cobbles, their bodies twisted unnaturally in death. That's sad. So I guess no matter what, they probably had to die here, huh? You are alone and far from help. Gilded Veil may be your best hope of receiving treatment before things get worse. Your characters earned enough experience to advance their level. Click the icon on their portrait to level them up. Okay. There we go. Okay, so I have six points left. Let's go through these. Stealth allows characters of any class to attempt to avoid being seen or heard. It uses... It is used automatically when the character is in scouting mode. The higher the character skill, the closer they can be to enemies before being detected. Athletics, adventuring is tying work. Traveling, fighting, and scrambling up fallen statues can take its toll. The athletic skill counters the effects accrued of accrued fatigue, allowing characters to go farther, fight longer before they suffer penalties. In conversations and scripted interactions, athletics is used for physical feats like climbing, swimming, jumping. So I have one point, I suppose, in fatigue now, right? Oh, no, I don't have any. Okay. Lore represents a character's accumulated miscellaneous knowledge and trivia, often of occult or esoteric topics. Outside of conversations and scripted events, lore is used to activate scrolls. Higher lore values allow the character to use higher level scrolls. Or is it already in the rank 3? Oh, yeah, it already is rank 3. Okay. Mechanics. So, yeah, lore is not really necessary. There may not be uh, items that need to be identified, but it does allow you to use scrolls, which I assume are one-time use spells. Traps and locks can be a problem for even the toughest adventurers, draining the resources and maiming or killing those who are unfortunate enough to trigger an unseen floor plate. The mechanic skill makes it easier to open locks and find and disable traps. Makes sense. Higher the mechanic skill, the more accurate the trap. Conversations, scripted interactions, mechanics can be used to activate or disable a variety of machines. Okay. And survival. Survival allows characters to make better use of the food and potion items they find. The higher the character's survival skill, the longer the duration of such items. Survival can also be used in conversations and scripted interactions. Hmm. So do I build my guy equally, or do I focus on one or two things? I kind of feel like focusing on survival and lore for this character. Mechanics and stealth make sense for some kind of stealthy guy. Athletics for, I mean, kind of everyone, really, because fatigue is a problem for everyone. Um, 
I do feel like survival will be important, however, for making items. Although I'm not even trying to make items yet. But clearly I'm looting things like meat and scraps of hide from animals and things that I fight, so... Hmm... I wonder if I could stockpile these for later, just not make the choice. Well, I definitely know athletics will probably be good. I'm not going to worry about mechanics or stealth too much, but I think I will. This actually costs two points to advance, so maybe that's actually not worth it for this character. Oh no, it's only going up when I put points into it. Oh, that's the same for everything. Okay, so why don't I do this then? Bit of survival, bit of athletics next. Looks like I get to pick another invocation. Requires three phases. Enchanted summons a phantom. I don't think these are new, however. These are the same as before. More AOE damage. I think, I, I think the thing I like the most is if their bones still slept under that hill, none can say. Summons three skeletons to fight for the party. Requires three phases chanted. Summons three skeletons. I think I'm going to do that next. Talents. Talents can be used to customize your character beyond your class ability choices. Some talents modify existing abilities. Others add new abilities of their own. A subset of talents are class specific, but most can be taken by the characters of any class. So this one's class specific. And these can be taken by anybody. Wow, that's a lot of a lot of things. Let's see what this one. Invokes a primal energy, causing allies within the range to benefit from constant endurance regeneration while chanting. So it's passive. Anytime you're chanting at all, they gain 0.8 endurance per second. So it's like a constant AoE heal. That seems pretty good. Weapon focuses. Marksman. One-handed style. 30% of grazes converts to hits with one-handed weapons. That's actually pretty good, too. Can engage one additional enemy. That'd be great for a tank. Extra just uh, resist, it seems. Movement speed. Plus burn damage. Increases burn damage, yeah. Shock damage. Corroded damage freeze damage. Reduces recovery time when switching weapons or spells. Hmm. I think I'm going to take Ancient Memories for now. For sure, this guy will not just be a persistent healer over time. And it seems like I'm done. Perfect. After leveling up a character, you may want to review their statistics. Open the character sheet to see their attributes, skills, abilities, and talents in greater detail. Which is here. I don't think there's anything too surprising. Health is permanent. Endurance is temporary damage. Damage, obviously, accuracy. Damage reduction. Which is how much, I think, damage gets subtracted. Defenses is, like, the role they have to overcome. Nothing too surprising here. Talents. Right, we just set up. Cool. Okay, well, let's, uh, huh, unfortunately, let's loot our old allies. Looks like we're just going to get everything that they have. Back, mule. Let's offload this junk. <laughs> it's very angry. Okay. So, let's see if we can't inspect this machine. Ooh. That was interesting looking. Couldn't tell what that was, though. It faded too fast. Something up here to loot. St. Gyron's Horn. Yeah, so can we inspect these guys? Oh. Uh, they can just fall apart, I guess. <laughs> yeah, there's another one. Looks like somebody, uh, like, burning on a... Like, on a pyre. Like a torture, kind of, or not torture, but an execution thing. Let's see. This massive structure is formed of stone, adra, and copper, and covered in strange glyphs. 
The air around it vibrates with an unusual energy. So beyond that, we don't really know anything about this, it seems. It clearly absorbed those men in some way, whether it took their soul or just their body. I'm not sure. So this icon keeps popping up. I think this probably means we can travel. You must gather your party before venturing. Oh, I see. Okay. So that was like the edge of the map then. Obviously, we want to get to Gilded Vale. That's our quest for now, but we have to go through Vale Wood. It seems to be the whole world map. Defiance Bay, we've heard of. Uh, that city before. Okay, so let's head into the Veilwood. It will take you six hours to complete your journey from Ceylon List to Veilwood. Alright, perfect. Hopefully we can find some additional allies. I don't, uh... I don't really relish the idea of going into much combat by myself. Uh, but I do have a, a shield and... Let's take a look at our quests real fast. Cross the Veilwood. Yes. And seek help for your condition. This is not an illness that struck me at the wagon. This is something new. An affliction of the mind, perhaps. With luck, someone in Gilded Veil vale will know what to do. Getting supplies and armor. My armor is already a little better, it seems. There's another kind of spirit-looking thing. So this must be the visions that uh, that I was talking about earlier. I just see things happening. I wonder if it's like from the past or uh, another dimension, perhaps. Chances are it's from the past. It's probably linked to the vision that I saw of the uh, the bearded man in the tower. Am I merging, perhaps, with another being, or something from my own past that I've forgotten? For some reason, the dead are just everywhere. <laughs> kind of like the idea of staying near these... Well, I was going to say I like the idea of staying near the light here, but... i got an outlaw. Okay. Where? So I'll start my chance. Can we look at this for a moment here? Accuracy 9, which I think is right here. Yes. Defense, minus defense 32. So I'm guessing this is going to be their defense. Yeah, upper left corner shows their, I think, just base defense to be 32. So yeah, it gives me negative 23. I rolled 82, so you can roll, I think, 1 out of 100. Subtract the 30 to 23, which is my accuracy with defense, 59, which is a hit. So I did hit. 14.8, I think, is my damage. Let's look real fast. Damage can be anywhere from 11 to 16. 18, okay, yeah, 14.8. Minus their damage resistance, which I assume is the armor. Um, yeah, damage resistance, 6. So I hit for 8.8, okay. That makes complete sense, actually. Currently hitting with, with thick through their tongue, so he has an easier chance to be interrupted. And now doing damage over time with my... There we go. Okay, so I've hit three phrases. I can use an ability now. Um, I kind of want to use the skeletons just to see how that works, so let's do this. Curse your eyes! Oh, man. Get him, skeletons! Okay, you, you... You... Hang on, let's organize this better. You're not doing anything, so run around. Oh, no! What is it? Don't do that. There you go. Looks like that forced her to disengage me, though. So skeletons have accuracy 21. So they're actually... Their damage is a bit better, but their or their accuracy is better, and their damage is 2.9, 4.6, so maybe anywhere from like 1 to 5, yes. maybe. 
That's pretty good for being three of them. Obviously, they're never going to hit for very much since the damage is as high. But I think I remember reading uh, in the first episode that there's like a minimum damage. It can't ever be below anything. So can I stun it now? I can. Stun. Curse your eyes. Nice. Take care of it. And the skeletons are gone. That worked out perfectly. A sword, shield, an open helm. I might use this one instead. And silver finnings. Let's open up our stash. Go to armor. No. Yeah. So again, I don't think these do anything other than being aesthetic differences. So I'll just do that. I think I want to just use the sword as well. Let's take a look. I'm kind of curious how this... I guess this should be if I should... If I want to use things quickly, I should set them here, but otherwise they're all going to go to here. So let's see. 11 to 16, pierce. Oh, look at that. The sword is 11 to 16, slash, and pierce. And remember, it will always take the best properties accurate. Hmm. So I wonder if the spear is just more accurate if it increases my accuracy. Let's find out. Yeah, look at that. Accuracy for here compared to accuracy 9. Mm, I think I want the accuracy 9, really. I like the idea of my uh, yes. initial roll always being much higher because of really good accuracy. Although 9, nine is pretty terrible in general. So, I don't really know where I'm going at this point, just kind of wandering around. Hopefully I find something. This is actually probably not the way to go, now that I think about it. Gilded Vale is down and to the right. But that's okay, we can explore a little bit. See what this cave looks like. Since I'm by myself, I'm not really keen on exploring too much. If I see anything that looks dangerous, I probably won't. <laughs> sure enough, there's a bear. I don't think I'm going to bother. Um, I'm sure that I will be able to come back here later. I can't imagine a bear being killable at this low of a level. Hmm, so I guess this could be... I could use this to go back the way I came. Or just as I'm exploring, obviously as I unlock new areas, I could just fast travel from this corner of the map instead of having to walk to a specific corner. Got another wolf. Okay. So we'll start hitting it. Let's see what it's... It's defense also is 27. So it seems like my rolls are always going to be... always going to be bad. Which is fine. Oh yeah, Sir Tristan effect. Sir Tristan with ancient memory, so I gained some of my endurance back. I wonder if I'm if I if I'm gaining health back as well. Let me go ahead and uh, stun him. When I get hit by ancient memories, is my doesn't look like my health is going back up. Yeah, look at that stun. Oh, only 2.5 seconds. Not actually not that long. Definitely long enough to get a free hit in, which is good. So it looks like when I gain Ancient Memories, my health is not going back up. So my ability to fight in the long term is not affected by that. Just my short term, which is really good to know. <laughs> my guy just sounds so angry. Okay, there's more. Not really spirits, but just specters of some kind. Shattered pieces of a crate are strewn across the dirt, along with a few muddy vegetables. The grass is still flattened behind the wagon's wheels. Barrels of cabbages, potatoes, and squash have been overturned and abandoned. That looks like some kind of road. Probably going to be useful to stick to it, although I've already explored most of this area, so that's good. More campfire supplies. I think I'm almost to my limit here of what I can hold. 
crossbow. Looks to be some kind of camp. Hey, we got Nonton. Good day, stranger. This man appears to be hurriedly dismantling his camp in quick, jerky movements. He looks up as you approach, his expression tense and drawn. Greetings, he says, a little breathless. On your way south, is it? He wipes his brow, turning to face you. The sooner you're clear of these woods, the better, I think. Our caravan was attacked. There were in the woods is a strange machine in the ruins up north. There were these figures clad in black, performing some kind of rite. I'm not sure he would care terribly. What's the hurry? I'm only passing through. I think it's okay to tell this guy that we were attacked on our way here. Hard luck. I'm sorry to hear it. You should be fine from here. There's no missing the veil if you keep to the road. You haven't far to walk. That's good. But you want to keep clear of this place after that. We were just attacked north of here, me and a friend of mine. We came out to hunt some deer. We came upon a bear instead. Great monstrous thing. And Pearly, he didn't make it out. He shakes his head. I don't know what I'll tell his wife. So it looks like the bear we came across has already claimed a victim, so that's probably good. I didn't try to fight him on my own. In any case, this forest already cost me a friend. I'm heading home before it takes anything else. I know where the bear is, but who are you? Name's Nanton. Born and raised in Gilded Vale. Haven't had a spot of luck since. His face twists. Luckier than Pearly, I suppose. Well, that's true. In any case, this forest already... Okay. What happened to your friend? We didn't see it coming. Nanton's voice shakes a little as he speaks. We were following a stag. Pearly, he saw something in the brambles. We went in. We went tearing off after it. We stumbled into the cave. Poor Pearly didn't stand a chance. The bear was on top of him before he knew what was happening. Well, sorry to hear about that. Farewell. This seems to be the end of the uh, Vale Wood. Check this area up here first. Well, maybe not. Seems like there's a little bit more to explore. Um, bandit. Hmm. I might save here first in case this is an awful idea. But I am curious. The young dwarf tending to the stew looks up, startled as he sees you approach. He drops his ladle, spattering stew across the ground. What? The bandit's turn. To get him, you dogs. And make sure our new cook doesn't run off. Help, please help more. One of the bandits gives Tin Tinrif Tin Tinfrith a kick as they pass him and he huddles. Ugh, three bandits. Um alright, well let's give it a shot. I did save. Graze, hit. Not doing too well here. Should I summon the skeletons? I think I should summon the skeletons for this combat. That will give them something else to deal with at least. And perhaps I can draw the attention of the archer back there. Come on. Okay, good. So let's get these guys here. Maybe he can help fight this. There we go. Yes. Uh, I should perhaps turn my attention here. I'm gonna get a stun up soon. I might survive this, but it's gonna cost me a lot of health. And it may be worth checking a potion. Okay, I can almost stun. Good, I killed one. I kinda wanna get this guy down as well. Can I peel off of him? I can. Oh, good, okay. Those skeletons work really well for that. I can get a stun, so let's try. Let's make sure we don't stun. Actually, let me move up here. And I'll stun the bandit. Uh, the archer, the ranged bandit. Nope, not quite close enough. Uh-oh, did I lose a skeleton? Yeah, sure did. Let's get the stun on this archer. Got it, good. She's still stunned. This bandit is killing my skeleton slowly here. My only hope is that I can kill her. 
this next strike. No, I just missed completely. Let me see what a miss is. Accuracy 16. Why is my accuracy 16 now? Oh, right, because fighting spirit, my hit points are below 50. Okay. So accuracy 16, minus defense, so minus 2. My roll was an 8. So I bet anything less than like 10 or 15 is probably just going to be a straight up miss. So good. Good to know. Oh boy, this bandit. Okay, good. I can summon more skeletons. I think that's probably the wise thing to do. Oh, it actually unsummoned the one skeleton that I had. Okay, good to know. Um, let's get my three skeletons attacking this guy. I'll just take one of them, I think, and attack this range bandit as well. What is it? Where? Same thing, can I peel off my character? Me too. Uh, she doesn't care, I guess. She's got a range weapon, that makes sense. That sounded bad. I don't think it hit me, though. Why doesn't this cook tint frith help at all? Good, she's dead. I think the skeletons allowed me to survive this combat here. Without them, I probably would have would have lost. What is it? And the skeleton goes down. And get another stun off. Oh, did I just miss? It did miss, but thankfully I didn't. I didn't just target it poorly. Alright, let's speed this up a little. Why is he keeps healing? I've definitely been beating on him for quite a while. Kills my people, but me. <laughs> uh, let's get another stun. I want to set it up so that I don't hit my own skeleton. There we go. A few seconds stun. It seems like the skeletons will just stay until combat ends. I'm really confused as to why his hit points are not going down. Okay, I'm gonna get more skeletons. I understand why I'm healing. Step back a little. Oops. Okay, I need to remember that when I summon those skeletons, it will select all of them. As you wish. Okay, he's flanked. He's now injured. Good. Lost another skeleton. If not for my health, I could probably do this forever. Okay, you attack him. Well, I can stun him. I'll go ahead and stun one of my skeletons, I guess. Actually, will it even hit my skeleton? I'm not sure. You know, it actually does say foe AoE, so I don't even think I can I can hit my own allies with this. Look at him, he keeps gaining hit points. This fight may actually go on forever. I'm not sure why. I guess... Maybe not. Oh my gosh. Alright. More skeletons. Everybody attack him. Yes. You peel off. There we go. I really don't know what to think about this. Stun him? <laughs> Okay, that didn't work. This is interesting, I don't... I'm not, okay, so... <laughs> I think his hit points are going down just really slowly. You know, I think what it is is because he's a fighter, he is actually regaining hit points as this battle goes. And that's just one of those... fighter things. It's actually better, no, it's actually better, I think, if he attacks me. 
because that way my skeletons won't die and they can keep beating on him. And I can just chain stun him to keep his damage up put low. Ugh, oh, finally. That was way longer than it should have been. Cool. Well, you know what? Uh, this ran a bit longer than I think uh, than I thought it would, so I'm going to take a break here. But thank you so much for joining me for this episode, and I will see you guys next time.